I am Dr. Achal Pan, dermatologist. Let's discuss common sunscreen myths. Myth number one, that sunscreen makes skin darker. This happens when you are using a zinc oxide sunscreen or a sunscreen with a physical filter that is not matching your skin. So sunscreens do not make your skin dark, but it's like you know using a foundation that does not match your skin. So if you're using a sunscreen with zinc oxide, it'll just make your skin appear a little bluish, a little dull. So that is the number one reason why you feel that your skin looks darker. Okay, so in that case, you can go for a chemical sunscreen which does not have zinc oxide that will blend well and match with your skin better. Also using sunscreens with antioxidants in them like a vitamin C can sometimes make your skin darker because their vitamin C can oxidize. So try to avoid using sunscreens with vitamin C if you feel that it makes your skin darker. But sunscreens do not make your skin darker so you can go ahead and use a sunscreen just need to find the right one for you. Second is chemical sunscreens are harmful and you should use a natural sunscreen. There's nothing like a natural sunscreen. All sunscreens contain either organic filters or inorganic filters. Inorganic filters are zinc oxide, titanium dioxide and iron oxide and organic filters are the octisalate, oxybenzone, homosalate, tinosorb, uvinol, avobenzone or these come under organic filters. So a sunscreen must have either of these ingredients in order to be effective. So there is no natural ingredient that can protect your skin from the sun, absolutely not. Though carrot seed oil and these um, vegetable oils have been promoted as having sun protective effect but they only have mild antioxidant effect and do not form a coating on the skin or have enough activity to protect your skin against UV rays. So don't fall for this claim that you need natural sunscreen. Myth number three, one time application is enough. Reapplication of sunscreen is very important in order for it to be effective. I know reapplication can be tedious, especially if you're on the go, you know, stopping every three to four hours to reapply sunscreen can be a problem. But remember that reapplication is very, very important, especially if you're somebody who is exposed to harsh sunlight. If you are mostly indoors or stay indoors away from sunlight, then you can get away with applying sunscreen just once or twice in a day. But if you are somebody who is on the go and outdoors and have a lot of sun exposure, Exposure, the reapplication of sunscreen every two to three hours is important. You can use stick sunscreen, which makes it very easy for reapplication. You don't need to wash your face before every reapplication. You can just apply a layer of sunscreen on your existing layer. Also remember that if you are working in an office space which has large windows and ambient natural light coming in, then you have to repeat your sunscreen every three to four hours. Fourth is you don't need sunscreen when indoors or on cloudy days. We all know this is not true. Even when you're indoors, there can be an ample amount of sunlight that penetrates. So the glass windows can block UVB but not UVA. So you have to wear a sunscreen even when you're indoors. And even on cloudy days, the clouds do not completely obstruct the penetration of UVA. So therefore, you require sunscreen even on cloudy days. Fifth common myth is physical sunscreens reflect sun rays and chemical sunscreens absorb and convert it to heat. This is absolutely untrue. Actually, I also believed it for a very long time, but physical sunscreens also absorb the UV rays and convert it to heat. So we used to feel that physical sunscreens just form a layer on the skin, or form a coating on the skin and they reflect rays, but that is not how it works. Even zinc oxide and titanium dioxide do absorb the rays and convert that to heat. So basically the physical and the chemical sunscreens work in a similar way. It's just that the physical sunscreens are preferred in people who have sensitive skin type because they tend to irritate the skin less. Otherwise you can use either physical or chemical sunscreens, whatever suits you whenever you want sun protection. Sixth is oxybenzone is bad for skin. There was a study done on animal models where they used high concentration of oxybenzone and found that that caused hormone disruption. So oxybenzone is absolutely safe when present in the quantity that it is present and the percentage that it is present in our regular sunscreens. So you don't have to fear oxybenzone. You might want to avoid oxybenzone if you have melasma or stubborn dark spots or photocontact dermatitis or sensitive skin. These are conditions where I prefer to use a plain zinc oxide sunscreen. Otherwise, you can go ahead and use a sunscreen with oxybenzone. Actually, sunscreens which are affordable and present very readily in the market do contain oxybenzone, so you don't have to fear it. 
it is more important to use a sunscreen on a regular basis in order to get full benefits rather than worrying about the UV filters. Seventh is if you are getting tanned then sunscreen is not working. This is not true even if the sunscreen protects your skin from UV rays you can still get tanned. So tanning is caused by UVA rays and burns is caused by UVB rays. So application of sunscreen protects your skin from sunburn and photo aging. Okay, so even though your skin tans a little it is still okay that does not mean that the sunscreen is ineffective because it is protecting your skin from burns and early signs of photo aging. So you should still apply a sunscreen even if you feel that it does not completely block the tan. Remember that sunscreen no matter how much quantity you apply does not 100% block the penetration of UV rays. So even if a percentage of the UV rays do penetrate this can lead to tanning and tanning is a protective mechanism of the skin to protect itself from UV rays. So if you are or going on a vacation or if you are swimming then you are very likely to tan in spite of using a lot of sunscreen. But that does not mean that it is not effective we should still apply sunscreen because we want to prevent burns. It is that sunscreens cause cancer. I get a lot of questions asked in the comment section and in patients in my OPD who ask me that you know what, they are, what is this report that they are reading, do sunscreens actually cause cancer? No sunscreens do not cause cancer, there have been enough studies to prove this otherwise. So sunscreen when applied in the quantity that we use, in the area that we use, for the amount of time that we use is absolutely safe. So do not worry about sunscreens causing cancer, they do not. Ninth is that children do not need sunscreen. Children do need sunscreen, you need to apply a plain zinc oxide sunscreen on kids. Kids also tend to burn, so that is why application of sunscreen is very very important in children as well. Especially if they are engaging in outdoor activities or swimming, then you have to make sure that you apply a sunscreen in kids as well. I see a lot of kids on vacations getting burnt, they get burnt on the shoulders, they develop bully on the shoulders and arms, so make sure that you apply ample amount of sunscreen on these areas apart from just the face and neck also on the shoulders and arms especially when you're out on a vacation out on the beach and you know you're going to have a lot of sun exposure that day then you want to make sure that children are protected with a good layer of sunscreen and reapplication every three to four hours is also very important in kids as well tenth myth is that sunscreens can cause vitamin d deficiency no sunscreens do not cause vitamin d deficiency there have been studies where they have studied people who have applied sunscreen on a regular basis and those who haven't and checked their vitamin d levels and found that sunscreen do not cause vitamin d deficiency so remember that genetically indians are prone to be vitamin d deficient so if you are having any symptoms of vitamin d deficiency it is worthwhile to get it checked and be on supplements but application of sunscreen is not going to cause a deficiency and uh, there is going to be enough penetration of uv rays in order to trigger the formation of vitamin d on the skin okay so it's not going to completely block the rays 100 percent so you can go ahead and apply sunscreen even if you are vitamin D deficient, do not worry about it. There are other sources of vitamin D such as food sources that you need to look into if you are deficient in vitamin D, increase the consumption of food that is rich in vitamin D. And also if it is very deficient then please consult a physician and consider being on supplements. These supplements need to be taken once in a week for about 3 to 6 months. This can help in correcting your vitamin D deficiency but skipping sunscreen is not going to correct a vitamin D deficiency or make you vitamin D deficient. So these were a few myths that I wanted to bust about sunscreen. Remember that sunscreen is very important in our brown skin type to reduce dark spots and reduce the signs of aging. Okay, so regular application of sunscreen is important and it is prudent to use sunscreen on a regular basis in order to see results with the other skincare products that you are using as well. I hope you found this video useful. If you like such skin and hair related content, you can follow me on my Instagram handle Dr. Archil MD where I post such skin and hair related content daily. Thank you for watching.